The Mexico expedition consists of two main parts. The terrestrial expedition is based in the Mayan jungle, or the Selva Maya, located in the Calakmul Biosphere Reserve, which is the largest protected area in Mexico, and it makes up part of the largest expanse of forest outside of the Amazon rainforest. We've got five different research locations which we are collecting data in the reserve and in each of those locations we need to collect data on birds, on bats, reptiles, amphibians, butterflies, the primates, large terrestrial mammals and of course all the habitat surveys so we can understand more about the distribution patterns of these wildlife groups. So we desperately need to get more information about our populations so we can understand exactly how they adapt, what are their ecological niches here in the reserve and therefore what is the impact of the changing landscape caused by drought and rainfall changes and how that's impacting on their population. Quick metabolisms need to eat often. A big part of Upwell is education and conservation through uh, the future and so these students are hopefully going to return as future technicians even and that has happened many times. Uniform black on low on posterior third of body and on tail. Yep. In terms of reptiles and amphibians, Calic Mall is thought to be one of the most diverse regions in the world but very little research has actually been done here so we've got so much to learn. In fact in 2015 Opwell published a paper identifying four new species previously not thought to be here. As soon as you see a reptile amphibian, we try and catch it, we do the morphometrics. When I'm on a transect, if it's just me, I, I won't be able to spot everything. I need the three or four people behind me. And more often than not, it's them spotting things that I don't, I miss. In lectures, there's only so far that you can really go in terms of detail and depth and understanding of a topic. And when it's actually there in front of you, your understanding just rockets. When you first get here, you're given lectures to really let you know the details of why you're here and what you're doing. So then when you're out on survey, you know that everything you spot and every like piece of information you take down is really going towards like a massive, massive project. Coming here uh, has been incredible. Seeing how the mines have influenced the forest is just unbelievable. You can't really describe to a person in words. You have to experience it quite humbling really because you think these people were here so many thousands of years ago and they changed the whole landscape so everything you're seeing has a connection back to the ancient Mayans and it's not just oh this is a jungle this is it means something Akamal basically translates as home of the turtle and there are a heck of a lot of turtles in this area. A lot of people want to see them, take photos of them and unfortunately with the amount of tourists that we get in the bay, the turtles can get stressed and they manifest the stress with tumours that can appear on their necks, on their eyes, on their flippers. They cannot perform their daily functions, they can't eat, they can't see. So we've been monitoring this and we've taken all of our data from the last six, seven years to policy makers uh, and universities and we have been able to protect this area. So the turtles have now got their own little protected area where there are no tourists allowed. It's where I learned actually and I've carried on this love for the ocean ever since I was here as a university student. 
coral reef restoration gives a lot of hope to marine biologists who usually have to spend most of their time measuring how quickly the reefs are dying. For the past two years I've been working with Operation Wallacea in reef restoration, so we're using Acropora corals to restore areas of reef. Acropora is one of the really, really important reef architects, so it grows relatively fast compared to the other corals. It's really, really interesting to be doing proactive conservation, where we're actually going out and growing corals, having groups of uh, five or six students come out with me two or three times a day diving on the reefs here, means that I've been able to map the Acropora corals here for the first time ever. This allows us to make conservation decisions and also allows us to move forward with the restoration project. It's a really great area for anybody to get involved in who cares about conservation because it's actually offering a solution to one of the problems that we're facing here on the coral reefs in the tropics. Working on a science expedition, it's made me really aware of how much we need to conserve what we've still got left because it's the most beautiful thing I've honestly ever seen. I've been lucky enough to see it and I want other people to be able to see it in the future.